ταξίδια στο διάστημα. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Είναι ο επισκέπτης. Ο επισκέπτης από το μεγάλο άγνωστο. Έτσι με ονόμασαν όταν έφτασα στο μικρό πράσινο πλανήτη που περιστρέφεται τρίτο σε απόσταση από τον ήλιο του συστηματός τους, έναν μικρό ήλιο. Πριν ξαναφύγω για το μεγάλο άγνωστο, όπως λένε οι κάτοικοι του μικρού αυτού κόσμου, γιατί πρέπει να φύγω, θα πάρω μαζί μου ό,τι στοιχεία μπορώ για να μιλήσω στον κόσμο μου για τον άνθρωπο, την αξιοθαύμαστη ράτσα που τόσο μας μοιάζει και που κατοικεί τον μικρό πλανήτη που οι κατοικοί του τον λένε... Ο σταθμός μας παρουσιάζει Well, it was actually an old radio uh, space series from Greece from the 1960s, and many of our listening audience here grew up with uh, all kinds of space uh, programs, space books, space cartoons, and uh, everyone was spacing out, actually going back <laughs> probably since as, as early as the dawn of man. People have wondered about space. Our guest today is Dr. Vanessa Farsadaki. She's a space medicine expert and futurist, and uh, she is president and managing partner of Space Exploration Strategies, LLC. Her impressive bona fides include advanced degrees in biology, genetics, astronomy, astrophysics, and business leadership. She has won numerous awards, including the International Trailblazer Award for her futurist work in space medicine. She is a British Interplanetary Society Fellow and the youngest space ambassador to be recognized by the National Space Society. And as a medical doctor, Dr. V, as she is known, is a scuba diver, a pilot in training, and a skydiver. She is being honored by the Alpha Omega Council this Saturday at the 47th Annual Honors Gala to be held at the Intercontinental in, in Boston. The, this year's theme celebrating visionaries and trailblazers and the Emerging Leader Award will go to Dr. Vanessa Farsadaki. And we want to say good morning. Kalimera, Dr. V, how are you? Kalimera sas, Kalimera sas. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. What for... a great intro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, wasn't that fun, that little space series that we had in our archives? <laughs> yes, yes. A lot of people grew up with that. So, um, And there goes to, to show how important the radio is has always been, right? Yes, absolutely. And we're just so pleased that you could join us today and that you're coming to Boston uh, to be awarded, to receive this uh, prestigious award from the Alpha Omega Council. Now, have you been to Boston before? Yes, of course. I've got family in Boston. Um, but uh, it is very humbling to to be coming for this reason uh, this weekend. Um, it really means a lot. I mean, I... Uh, can't stop saying thank you to uh, the council. Um, it, it, we'll, we'll have a good time, though, as well. Uh, we'll have a lecture, talk a little bit, and uh, probably get to know a little bit better uh, the local community over in Boston. Yes, so, uh, yes, you do have a lecture coming up. Space is for Everyone is the uh, title of the, and it's going to be at the MIT Sandberg Center this Friday at 5.30. Uh, it's being uh, sponsored by the Alpha Omega Council, and it is free and open to the public. And I, I wanted to ask you about your work, because when I see space medicine, I, I really don't know anything about that. What what are some of the examples or some of the potentials uh, for us uh, with medicine and space? 
Well, there are so many uh, ways that uh, space health in general is getting uh, lots of traction nowadays. And uh, it's been accelerating, right? Because in the next few years, it will be even more so uh, very prominent. Some things we might think about right now historically are are everyday items, things like the MRI machine, lots of imaging machines in general. Um, And in general for space, even starting from a ballpoint pen, you know, all through the MRI machine, everything that we're using in our everyday lives has been developed for space and in space, uh, but it has an impact on our everyday lives. Uh, right, so um, the fact that we get to to invest into space to get that R and D um, to under better understand the the world gives us an easier way of life here on Earth. Uh, it has a direct impact. Uh, most people, you know, often ask, "How come we we are going to space and we're not trying to, to solve our issues on Earth?" And that is exactly the answer. The fact that we're going uh, to space and investing all that money in space is making our life easier here on Earth. And most people don't realize that. Oh, I don't. I don't think they do. And and while we're talking about it, it your firm um, now the Space Exploration Strategies LLC. Do you receive your funding from from the government or from private sources? So it's a mixture. Uh, we we have both. Um, what we mainly do, however, is help um, clients, uh, our clients who are mainly from the private sector, to get contracts with the government and with other uh, private sector establishments. So um, we deal with everything cutting edge within the space health sector, meaning that if a firm, uh, whether they're well-established or less well-established, uh, are willing to go into the space sector or specifically into the space health sector, uh, then we deal with everything that has to do with that, whether it's business development or funding resources or proposal writing or government contract uh, negotiations. Um, where we deal with everything that has to do with that. And, you know, mostly we, we see the, the military uh, involvement, um, government-wise, that is. And is there a concern about private investment in this? Because uh, I'm just thinking about now, I have to bring in some pop culture here, but there was a movie that came out a few years ago, Avatar, and uh, it, it uh, dealt with uh, space travel and this very precious metal that was out there that was being mined out in space. And I'm thinking that if I'm, you know, a billionaire and I'm, I'm donating or I'm, I'm investing in this, do I have ownership of that mineral if I discover it or if I bring it back to Earth? Is it going to do wonderful things but, but make things expensive for the regular you know, Maletti on the street? <laughs> well, what a wonderful question. You know, uh, we're still trying to figure that out. Uh, that's what space law is about. Uh, there's lots of uh, meetings happening. The first one for the first set of space law rules happened um, over two decades ago with the UN, but uh, this year already, we're starting to establish things with what happened with the meetings that happened over at Copius uh, at the UN in Vienna uh, this past May. Um, we're really trying to set what uh, the rules are, right? Because um, the big questions and coming closer to space health that uh, I deal mostly is what kind of, for example, insurances are we going to have out there? Uh, insurances are already jumping all over uh, space health and patients in space. And all those questions of um, what would happen if uh, government X goes onto the asteroid uh, and uh, onto an asteroid and starts mining, who does that belong to? Can they pretend they're doing research and then end up with a whole bunch of uranium, for example? Um, this has happened before, unfortunately. 
And the the real question that that comes is who establishes and who imposes those rules? Who will enforce them down the line? Uh, so yes, absolutely, it's very sensitive, and we're still trying to figure it out. Well, you're you're uh, in a good place to to be able to influence those those policies and those laws uh, rules that are being developed. Um, you know, it's so important. I, I think about the the picture of uh, the landing on the moon and and someone you know sticking a a, a flag into the into the moon, and thinking to myself, "Wow, does that mean this is ours?" You know, <laughs> and and uh, what you know what's going through people's minds. I'm curious at how you got involved in this particular field. Was this something you know? What was your source of inspiration as a child? Oh, well, um, as a scientist, I, I tend not to become very romantic. Uh, but this is this is a question that, that leads to my childhood. Um, one of my first memories is just um, sleeping outside, like we call it strom- stromatsava, right? Yeah. Uh, to be looking at the stars and the night sky over in Greece and um, my grandfather was from an island called Skopelos, and oh. uh, we, he was a navigator by definition <laughs> because he was a sailor. Yes. Um, so one of my very first things as a child was learning how to navigate based on stars, based on winds, uh, based on tide, based on what my environment looked like, and that that was. That is something that is not obvious um, to to other people who have not grown next to the sea, who don't have that experience. And just space for me was always the obvious thing. It was always there. Um, So I knew that sooner or later I would be getting involved with something space. Um, I was always passionate about the, the human body. Um, I had a lot of knowledge about it uh, growing up. I uh, I learned quite a few languages. So for a while, I was contemplating that maybe political science might have been more more interesting for me because I knew so much about international relations and and languages. But um, it turned out that through medicine, I had this this amazing opportunity of going into space and. Uh, between everything that is happening right now and the geopolitical dynamics and uh, the opportunities that there are out there, it turns out that everything come, boils down to, to be interesting. So whether I, I know about international relations or I want to use the languages that I speak or want to talk about um, my clinical work or my research or uh, policy and leadership within space, then, you know, everything everything applies. So it, it, they're puzzle pieces, basically, that uh, I have accumulated over the years. And um, now it's some, the whole puzzle is something that enables me to have interesting talks and uh, wake up every morning doing a job that I love. That's so wonderful. Where did you grow up? Oh, well, that is another complicated question. Uh, so uh, my mother worked for the Greek Ministry of Education. She she was a teacher, quite simply. Uh, but she was among those people that um, the Greek Ministry of Education would call up and say, hey, we need you in two weeks over there. Would you go? So um, I am 32, and we have moved uh, about 19 times. Uh, so I, uh, from continent to continent and country to country and city to city. So a little bit all over, um, there, there was a little bit of Greece, obviously I was born in New York, uh, but there was Canada, uh, there was Switzerland, France, um, Belgium, a little bit all over, really. So you <laughs> got to time. see, <laughs> you got to see the world uh, at a, at a young age, and through through living and changing those environments, that must have helped and influenced um, your ability to adapt and change in this ever changing space. Because there 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 are new things that must be always uh, must be always coming up. Now, is your firm just our research, or is it research and development? And do you get to actually? 
see things implemented? So actually, uh, SCS is uh, dealing with the business side of uh, space health. Um, as privately as an independent researcher, I have some collaborations. Uh, you mentioned, for example, the British Interplanetary Society. Yes. Uh, we're working together on uh, a human hibernation study uh, for deep space travel, right? The concept of uh, very big distances uh, in our solar system and even the universe, even beyond, um, is is very complicated for a human body, right? So um, we have been looking at how our um, organs and different uh, elements within our body react to, to long-term sleep. Uh, that is That is one thing that I'm looking at, we're working with um, another uh, company over in the Netherlands uh, that is dedicated to human reproduction um, and even more complicated, so human uh, labor in uh, in space. Um, there's there's lots of uh, lots of elements. Another one that I'm very heavily involved with, it's an international project about uh, mental health in space, uh, because things seem to get very complicated very fast once you're in a confined tiny space with uh, without your support system, and uh, you have to look outside into the vastness of uh, of uh, absolutely nothing. Right? There's no uh, there's no chronobiology as we call it anymore. No no night and day. No no sun and moon. Um, so, uh, you know, there's lots of things that uh, that are happening on the side at the same time as, as my company. Uh, but yes, the SES is, um, is dealing, so our team is mainly dealing with, with anything business related for, uh, for, for the space health sector specifically. You know, you had mentioned that, um, you know, as a scientist that you're, you're um, you know, you see, you're not as romantic, say, as most of us in looking back or in, in that sort of way. I'm curious because a lot of my friends who are uh, engineers or are scientists, they also have a deep love for music. I'm just curious, does your mind uh, go there as well? Oh, how interesting. Well, I'm very biased uh, because my 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 second uh, my second family, my my uh, my godparents are uh, Manoli Mitya and Lisa Mitya, and I don't know if really? you know. Really? Yes. 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 Um, oh. So I'm extremely biased because I grew up with uh, Hadzaki and uh, Pelzaraki and. So it's um, of course, of course it goes. And you know, I remember myself when I would be back, you know, in the operating room during those those times, and um, I would get to to choose the music. I would always choose Mitya when we were operating. So oh, how um, wonderful! <laughs> I have so many memories growing up. But uh, <laughs> yes, it was very closely related to to music. That's that's just great. You know, I'm, I I've, what I've been hearing from you is uh, that you were in a very supportive environment, a very loving environment that I can tell, and um, it, it offered you a lot of opportunities. Does any of your work touch upon the youth of today and uh, trying to reach out maybe to disadvantaged youth or maybe people, when I say disadvantaged, I don't mean economically, but I mean you know, maybe being in a family that's not as supportive and, you know, you're not going to be a, you know, a, a space person. You're going to work at the diner like the rest of us, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so um, actually, uh, there's, uh, again, I'm very lucky and I feel privileged in that way. Um, I, I don't feel privileged because I didn't have to work hard. Uh, I remember moments in my life where um, I did have to 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 work an extra job, and um, I did have to go back and forth and um, sleeping on trains that I didn't know whether I was going or coming back. And uh, I I did my masters of astrophysics at the same time as I did 
my my medical degree, my medical school, between rotations between two countries because I was between Italy and Switzerland at the time. And people are like, oh, please, cry me a river between Italy and Switzerland. It sucks to be you. <laughs> but the thing is that um, the, the fact that you're always trying to overcome things um, it is not that obvious. So I am lucky for the fact that I, I had an incredible mother growing up. I have an incredible support system uh, as of right now. And uh, the, the, the number one is, is my faith. My my faith is what has kept me going. Um, I I'm a very proud Greek American with everything that comes with it. I guess. Um, I when people call me Greek, I I correct them and say that no no, uh, I I'm Greek American. When people call me white, I say no no, I'm olive. Yeah. Uh, because I, I'm very I'm very proud of uh, everything I am as a as a as a young woman in a male-dominated space uh, where things are done the way they were done back in the 60s, when I come in and talk about things that are going to happen in five to ten years um, and futuristic things that uh, people haven't thought about but they're coming up, um, people don't don't get to take me as seriously. And... Uh, it takes a lot of effort to to actually be heard. So being heard is something that uh, you know we, we you just have to have faith in yourself and to just keep going and not listen to the to the external voices, but rather the flame you have within you that tells you to to keep going forward. <laughs> That's such a such a great message to um, not just young people but anyone, I guess. Because, you know, it kind of the days where we had one job for life. A lot of people are going from, from something to something. And it's never too late to get involved. Space is for everyone, is the... Um, really? Yeah. And so tell us, uh, now this is going to be this Friday, October 20th, from 5.30 to 8.30 at the MIT Sandberg Center, which is located at 50 Memorial Drive in Cambridge, uh, that we uh, it's free admission, but registration is required, and you can register through the website alpha omega council dot o r g. That's alpha omega council dot o r g. Doctor V will be speaking, and uh, that's that's really exciting for for those of us who can't make it on Saturday night to applaud and uh, to see you there receive this award and part of a very, very special ceremony that's been going on for 47 years, the Honors Gala. Uh, were you surprised when you when you received the phone call? I definitely was. I, um, I, I, <laughs> it was very, very interesting. I, I was having a very frustrating day um, trying to, 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 to convince um it was a room full of men once again, yeah. uh, trying to to convince them about a contract that we were trying to to, to pass uh, because there's there's a bill that that's coming up um, that that will be um, passing itself, you know, through the whole process. So, and that afternoon I had, uh, or that end of morning I think it was, I, I was having a a call with uh, Miss Agris, uh, who I didn't know at the time. And she told me, you, you, <laughs> I, I, I saw about you, I read about you, and um, I went to, to the board, and it passed unanimously that it's going to be you. And I, I, I just, I, I think I, I'm stuck on repeat with saying thank you, because I, I really, I cannot believe how, how amazing this is. And, um you know, I, I've been lucky enough to, to, to be receiving a few awards in the past few years uh, with for my work in space medicine, but it's the first time that I feel I'm recognized by, by my own, um, oh. quote-unquote, by yes. the fact that uh, uh, Greek Americans are recognizing my, my work and who I am, and uh, it, 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 it means so much. It means so, so much. I, I cannot wait 
uh, to 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 receive the award and meet everyone, um, and of course to to have a great time during the lecture on Friday. Uh, please, whoever feels like coming, it's going to be a great conversation. Um, my my talk is always interesting, but the uh, the conversation we have afterwards all together tends tends to be amazing. Yeah. It, it, does ever, anyone ever ask you? Now you mentioned that your your religion is very important. What, what, what is your home church, by the way? Well, so uh, I live in Houston, right? So yes. we have the Annunciation Cathedral here close to us. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Yeah. 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 Do, does anyone ever kind of look at you sideways and say, you know, uh, we don't believe in in this kind of thing. You know, we should just be staying here and be good people. And is is there is there religion in space? Of course, there is. Absolutely, there is. Every single day that I I talk about all the things that I discuss with my clients, my friends, and my colleagues. Um, the the number one thing that I see is the grand design. I'm 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 of course I'm I'm an advocate and a grand believer um, that the fact that science and religion are describing the, the exact same thing hmm. that there is a creator. To me, it's very very obvious. Um, of course, I'm being challenged for it, but hey, my scientific side is always up for it because I I'm happy to question everything. Um, but the more I question it, the more I see proof. So uh, to me, it's, it's a no-brainer. I mean, uh, the more you study physics, the more you realize how, how much of a, um, of a structure there is. And interesting, uh, interestingly enough, I will tell you this, there's something called the overview effect. I don't know if you've heard about that. No. Uh, the overview effect is is a, like a c- cognitive shift. It's called when uh, one travels outside of the Earth's atmosphere and gets to see the the fragility of the atmosphere and how all of their happy moments and sad moments and struggles and and family and enemies are below within that that very thin and fragile um, atmosphere. They realize that hey. You know, I, I have a bigger view right now of of what life is and how small I am and how magnificent everything is. So that's called an overview effect. Oh. And after the overview effect that 100% of people that fly into space experience, um, 82% of those 600 people that are called astronauts right now come back with some sort of... Um, religious slash spiritual uh, feeling uh, back to us. A lot of people have converted, a lot of people go into religion. Um, it, it's quite interesting because yeah. the, the more you experience space, the more convinced you are about something bigger than yourself. Uh, and I think that's beautiful. It's very interesting. Our guest this morning is Dr. Vanessa Farsadaki. Uh, she's a space medicine expert and futurist, and uh, she is uh, the preeminent thought leader in the advancement of space medicine. And uh, she is being honored at the uh, Alpha Omega Honors Gala, the 47th annual, uh, this Saturday night at the Intercontinental. It's a sold-out event, and uh, but she is uh, being sponsored by the Alpha Omega to give a presentation entitled Spaces for Everyone, and that's going to be on Friday night at 5.30 at MIT. You do have to pre-register, and you can find out more information on the Alpha Omega site. You, I wanted to go back to a couple of things that you mentioned. One, you mentioned that you're a medical doctor, and w- w- what is the field? Is it just general medicine, or was there a specialty? No, I did. I did uh, emergency medicine. Um, I did emergency medicine and served during COVID um, at uh, Lombardy in Italy. I don't know if you remember how it was, at the, especially at the beginning of the pandemic Yes. Um, over in North Italy, but that's, that's where I was. Um, it was it, it was quite heavy. Um, that's why I switched over from clinical to the business side of things. Yeah. Um, I realized that uh, that serving, um, 
I hadn't studied for all those years to to assist patients to to die peacefully. I had studied all those years to to advance humanity into living, not into dying. So um, it was quite a shocking element. And after emergency medicine, and uh, it was emergency medicine and surgery. I just decided to to uh, leave the clinical world and uh, go back into research. So yeah. that's when I did my postdoc. Yes, that's good. And your your love of languages now eighteen languages. You 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 know you know that I'm struggling now with English. So <laughs> I'm, I'm really I'm I'm I feel it's just amazing that you uh, you are you can communicate on some level in 18 languages. Uh, is that still going on for you? Is that, are you going to continue and try to study language, more languages, or is this it? I absolutely love languages. Um, I am already trying to keep up with the 18, meaning that whenever I have a break, um, half an hour in between meetings or something like that, I will make sure to just communicate with a teacher of mine, set up a quick appointment and, and talk, uh, maybe write, maybe do a few exercises. And um, I, I try to pack the 18 languages within uh, the, their learning and at the minimum their maintenance um, within, within, you know, a couple of weeks. Wow. And then it goes, it switches over again. So I wish I had more time to, to start a few more. Um, I'm I'm very passionate about communication with with other cultures. Uh, I think it's very important. Yeah. And just to to bo- go back to pop culture, I guess uh, one might guess that my favorite film of all times is Arrival, oh. um, because the element of the linguist with Communicating with uh, space beings is uh, is my I, was, <laughs> I guess my sweet spot. <laughs> it's so funny. I was going to ask you about that. I love that movie, and um, yeah. you know that, that I think that's really how it might happen. If if you know if we were in a similar situation, and all of a sudden there was some some vehicle here from another world, I would hope that they would bring in someone like you. That, 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 you know, with all that you know and uh, to be able to try to communicate, you know, it's so important. They better bring somebody like me. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how much our, our, our understanding or our acceptance has changed. Back, I'm thinking back to War of the Worlds. You know, where people were screaming when they saw these things and, and you know, all these, these uh, it was just destruction, instant destruction. And, you know, to where we are now with let's, let's communicate and maybe they're not hostile, you know. I just think it's a um, good thing. Of course, of course. Um, physics tells us and our uh, theories and axioms tell, tell us that um, chances are uh, if and wherever there are other civilizations out there, they're probably more advanced than we are. So um, they're either going to take over us very fast or most probably not bother with us because we're still a very baby civilization. And uh, what do I mean by that? So uh, we theorize that uh, universe civilizations, quote-unquote, are are measured uh, their advancement is measured by the amount of energy they can har- uh, harness, right? So um, energy is the, the key element within within the universe. It's uh, for travel, for self-sustaining, for growing, for thriving. Um, so we, we there, there are a few categories according to, to physics. Uh, the uh, the civilization that can harness their own solar system, um, their own star, that is. Uh, uh, a B category is the one that are within their galaxy, all of their galaxy. Um, and then C is all of the universe. You know, there's there's theories like that. We, we cannot even harness our own planet for energy. So we're definitely considered a baby civilization. Yeah. That's true. That's true. We are. And, and uh, 
Well, it's it's not a scary world anymore. It used to be a scary thought, I guess, and there was all these all this material that's getting declassified now about UFO programs and and uh, the the government had that was looking at un, unusual phenomenon in in the happening and uh, trying to explain it and saying, I understood that at first it was um, they they didn't want to release any of that because the public might panic. You know what? We're not the only ones here. I'm not the biggest, you know, fish in the pond. <laughs> Whatever the <laughs> definitely you know. not trying not to burst any bubbles, but definitely not. Um, so yes, I think the the fact that these phenomena are being declassified is getting it's getting interesting because the government is asking for help from the public to to help them out to figure out what those things were. Uh, and I think that that's fascinating because that, you know, it often happens that the public uh, can manage to figure out things better than the government just because when one person is so hyper focused on uh, a tiny little bit, they might miss the bigger picture. Uh, and that bigger picture might be leading to something that is the solution. So, it's always good yes. to have more brains than one. <laughs> yes, uh, it's so it's so wonderful speaking with you, Doctor V. I, you know, I've learned you so too. much just in this conversation. You know, I think I hope our audience as well has has learned a few things. I, I know I have. Uh, that space is, you know, it, there there are a lot of things. There's a lot of different dimensions to it, and that uh, a lot of different disciplines that are going to be brought into to understand and even as you were saying even space law something that i never thought about so all of this is very very interesting i i wish you the very best of luck i hope to see you by the way on friday evening at uh, the mit sandberg center uh, i hope so sir it would be so nice to meet you and uh, did you want to leave any any uh, uh, final thought for our listening audience uh, well, I have a lot of thoughts, and that's probably not good for the audience, but um, I, I'm i very, very open to always having a good conversation, so uh, please find me um, on social media, Astro Vanessa, or uh, through through my email, or please come, come on Friday uh, and meet me in person. I'm always very happy to talk about space and meet uh, fellow space enthusiasts. So please keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ed, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you again to the Alpha Omega Council for having me this weekend. It's great. All right. Have a nice day. Have a good day. Thank Bye. you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our special guest this morning, Dr. Vanessa Farsadaki, a space medicine expert and futurist, as she's the preeminent thought leader in the advancement of space medicine, president and managing partner of Space Exploration Strategies, LLC. And uh, she's a scuba diver, a pilot in training, and a skydiver. So much in her resume that we couldn't quite get to in, in a half an hour but uh, you can see. So this Friday night, do try to make it to her presentation. Uh, visit the website alphaomegacouncil.org and uh, look for that. Space is for everyone presentation. You need to pre-register for it. It's Wednesdays with Meleti and your host Meleti Poliopoulos here on Grecian Echoes, WNTN, 1550 AM in Cambridge, Needham, and Boston. Stay tuned for the news report with Nicoletta coming up at the top of the hour.